There's something about bananas that turns any story involving them into some wacky joke. No matter who I told about my experiences, no matter what kind of evidence I presented, people keep laughing it off. Friends, neighbors, the local news, the FDA, I've tried them all. Nobody believes me. They see me as a prankster, or a scammer, or a madman. There's just something about bananas that keeps people from taking this seriously. If only it hadn't been bananas. If this was a story about peers or radishes, there might be a chance, but it's not. It's a story about bananas. It had to be bananas. I used to love bananas. I ate them all the time. I used to swing by the little grocery store in my neighborhood that puts out bargain bags of overripe or otherwise damaged fruits. Low price for large quantities. Plenty of ways to process them, even if they are already mushy and black. Banana pancakes, banana waffles, banana pudding, banana bread. Cut them into cereals. Cut them into yogurt. Blend them into a milkshake. I really used to love bananas. I ate them all the time, until the day I found the bones. There was something a bit off about the bargain bag I had purchased that day. The fruits were in an unusually bad state. A lot were rotten beyond rescue. Even the few fruits that were still edible needed to be used right away. The one big exception was a bunch of bananas. They were pretty small and mostly still green. I carefully inspected them searching for a reason why they might have been sorted out. They seemed fine. They would just need a few days to ripen. So I just put them to the side and shifted my attention to the fruit that required immediate consumption. When I entered the kitchen the next morning, I was greeted by the sweet and sour stench of decay. My eyes were immediately drawn to the bowl on the kitchen counter. Just a few hours before, it had been filled with a mix of perfectly fine fruits. Now, most of them had turned stark black. All of them had burst open, their flesh transformed into a dark sludge. The only ones mysteriously spared by the rot were bananas resting on the top of the filth. They weren't as small as I remembered them from the previous day. Their green peel had taken a healthy shade of yellow, not a single discolored spot on them. With a wrinkled nose, I pulled them from the surrounding carnage, washed away the rotting fruit flesh, and put them back on the table before emptying the rest of the bowl into the trash. What a mess. I had been looking forward to a nice fruit salad for breakfast. At least I still had those bananas. I really liked bananas. I pulled one off the bunch, stripped it off of its peel, and took a bite. Instantly, my teeth hit something hard and uneven. A strange bloody taste spread in my mouth. I looked down. A bony protrusion peeked from the flesh of the banana. My fingers grabbed a hold of the thing. There was a slight resistance as I pulled. Slowly, the thing became loose. It was long. A spine. A tiny little spine. Little veins spread out from the thing. They burst open as I kept pulling, slightly reddening the natural color of the fruit. My tongue slid against the hard thing still resting on my mouth. I gagged. Those uneven bumps. That taste of blood. I toppled forward and spat out the half-chewed piece of fruit. It landed on the table with a splosh. From the rest of the sticky wet mass, 
rose the other half of the spine, slightly fragmented. I ran to the sink, spitting and wrenching. The taste kept sticking to my gums no matter how much water I gurgled. I hurried to the bath. After emptying half a bottle of mouthwash, I finally managed to calm down. The half-eaten banana still rested on the kitchen table when I returned, and so did its spine. My hand shook when I grabbed the second fruit from the bunch. It looked perfectly normal. I took a deep breath and broke it in half. It snapped in two with an audible crack. And there it was, traveling right along its center. Another bony spine. Red veins reaching out into the fruit flesh all around it. Just a few minutes later, I was already hurrying to the store. The package containing the two fruits swung at my side. As soon as I got there, I grabbed the nearest employee and held the bag out to his nose while loudly yelling at him about what had happened. He listened, slightly confused, to my rambling story. Oh god, so sorry, I have no idea how this could have happened. He lifted one of the mashed yellow chunks from the bag and turned it back and forth between his fingers. We have nothing to do with any of this. We'll contact the supplier and let them know about your complaint. And you can, of course, have your money back and- What? There's a goddamn piece of bloody bone in one of your bananas. How can you be so calm? He looked down at the fruit, then back up at me with a tired half-smile. That's when I understood. He wasn't believing a single word I had said. He probably thought I put the bone in there myself maybe to threaten the store with some bogus lawsuit. Enraged, I janked the half-chewed banana from his hand. I'd retrieved the rest of the bunch and returned. Once the employee found a spine inside an unopened banana, he would have to be convinced that this wasn't some sort of scam. I stormed into my apartment, made a beeline to the kitchen, ran towards the table, reached out to grab the bananas, and they are gone. There still had been four of them when I hurried out the door an hour earlier. Now the table was empty. Something moved on the floor next to me, something long and yellow, right beneath the sink. I spun around, my heart beating, nothing. I was alone, a bag of mashed bananas, and tiny fractured spines swinging in my right hand. I didn't feel like I was alone though, and the feeling stayed with me over the next few days. I kept seeing motion just in a corner of my eyes. Strange, slithering sounds filled the night. A sweet, exotic smell filled the rooms of my apartment. The signs kept getting more and more obvious until one day, one day. I woke up. I went to eat breakfast. I had bought fresh apples. A whole bunch of fresh apples. I had left them in the bowl on the kitchen table. Perfectly fresh and healthy apples. Or so they had been the night before. A disgusting stench greeted me the moment I entered the kitchen. There they were, the apples. The fresh apples, the formerly fresh apples, now they were all black and brown and rotting, and on top of them rested a whole bunch of tiny bananas, young and green. I broke one of them apart, it had a spine. I threw them into the oven, turned up the heat and watched as their peels began to smolder and burst open. The fruit flesh seeped from the open wounds. Hot air escaped from the thin openings, and it almost sounded like they were shrieking. This wasn't the end. They kept showing up, more and more of them each day. Now they're everywhere. I poured myself some milk 
and the fluid trickles out as a half-hardened, chunky mess, and something big rattles inside the carton. I look into a bag of flour and see something yellow sticking out, the white powder all around it speckled with unhealthy splotches of mold. I reach for my nightstand in the morning and my hand bumps against a whole bunch sitting right where my alarm clock used to be. They crowd at the top of my drawer. They clog my toilet, beneath the carpet, behind the bookcase, inside my shoes. Today, I woke up choking and gasping for air. My eyes bulged, something thick was shoved down my throat. My twitching fingers flew up and found a smooth surface. I pulled the thing came loose, banana. I used to love bananas. I used to eat them every day. Now I hate them. I am disgusted by them. I am afraid of them. I'm not saying that you have to feel the same way. Maybe everybody is right, and I am just going mad. But the next time you decide to eat one, check for bones first. Thank you so much for watching. I hope all of you are excited for October. If you have enjoyed this video, please do me a favor and click the like button and subscribe for more animated content. Also, I want to give a huge shout out to Mary. I wouldn't have been able to finish this video anytime soon without her help. Thank you guys again and I hope to see you soon.